Ladies and gentlemen, I'm humbled by Rupert's incredibly generous words, and I'm astonished that I should be honoured on the same stage as one of the brightest intellects of our age, the French philosopher and humanitarian Bernard-Henri Lévy. To put it briefly, I am not worthy. I am a hack politician who was, before he went down in the world, a journalist. And it is as a reporter that I want to salute the efforts of the Algemeiner tonight to tell the truth when the truth is needed more than ever. And as a reporter, I can tell you that the continent that Bernard-Henri Lévy and I love, Europe, is at a dark pass. Anti-Semitism, which all of us would have thought would have vanished from this earth forever after the unique crime of the Holocaust, is once more on the rise. It is a virus which mutates. In medieval times, anti-Semitism was religious, and it found its manifestation in ghettoization and forced conversion. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, anti-Semitism, under the perverted guise of scientific racism, led to eliminationist politics in Austria, in Germany, and the greatest crime that mankind has ever witnessed. But anti-Semitism anti has changed, and now it finds its expression in opposition to the Jewish people's collective identity and the existence of the State of Israel. Across the world, the new anti-Semites rally behind the boycott, disinvestment and sanctions campaign, the BDS campaign. And the people behind it have the temerity to compare Israel with apartheid South Africa. Even though Israel is a country which gives all its citizens, whatever their background, whatever their ethnicity, a vote and a say. A country with Arab politicians in the Knesset and an Arab lawyer on the Supreme Court. But worse than that, worse than libeling the State of Israel, the BDS campaign, by calling for the deliberate boycott of goods manufactured by Jewish people, by calling for the shunning of the Jewish state and the rejection of Jewish commerce and Jewish thought, actually commits a crime worse than apartheid. It reintroduces into our world and into our society a prejudice against the Jews collectively that should have vanished from the earth generations ago. Why does it matter so much, and to all of us, Jewish and non-Jewish alike? Because as the chief rabbi of the United Kingdom has pointed out, what starts with the Jews never ends with the Jews. Any country in which anti-Semitism is growing is a country that is moving into the dark. It was true of Spain in the Middle Ages, of Germany and Austria in the 19th century. It's true of Russia now under Putin. And it is also true that any country where the Jewish people feel at their safest is the most liberal and the freest country on earth. In the Renaissance, that was the Netherlands. In the 20th century, it was the United Kingdom. And now, it falls to America to be the place where Jewish people can feel safest and where the cause of Israel is defended with the greatest strength. And that is why it is... <laughs> a unique privilege to be here on behalf of the British government and the British people, to thank you, the American people, 
for your solidarity on the side of liberty, for your faith in democracy, for standing with Israel against its enemies, the Islamists, the fundamentalists and the anti-Semites, who hold all our values in contempt. And for that reason, I want to thank you for standing up for what is right and defending truth in your pages and in your person at this moment of crisis. Thank you.